Perfect. All right. Awesome. So uh, welcome to our curriculum committee meeting on Wednesday, October the 11th. Um, and I am going to turn things over to Katie, um, who has some updates for us. Yes. So the first thing I just wanted to touch upon is that October 6th was an in-service day for Scarborough Public Schools. So students and staff participated in a variety of activities at the building level by phase. And I just wanted to give you an update on that. As you know, the adoption of SEL curriculums lined up for K2 and ruler for 3-8, as well as just a focus on SEL learning and um, social emotional learning in general is a goal of the district right now. And so at all phase levels, regardless of implementation, K to 12, all of the teachers and staff were provided workshop opportunities to engage in that work. So at K2 and 3A, it, it was engagement in the implementation of their curriculums. And at 912, they had workshop opportunities um, because they engage in some kind of social emotional learning activities as a possibility through advisory. And so they have just some skill toolbox building workshops for teachers to engage in to help um, address some of our goals in the district around social emotional learning. So that was a wonderful opportunity for everyone to engage in that work from kindergarten through 12th grade for teaching staff. Um, they also had opportunities to engage in curriculum time and teacher designed time in order to address their own specific needs with curriculum. So that was great. And we collected feedback at the district level just to get an overall feel for the day. And it was, a, the feedback was positive in regards to the design and implementation of the day. So that was great. One thing we did ask that I think is beneficial looking forward to March or just in general is what would you like to see for future professional development opportunities? And I think teachers are always quick to reiterate something that we feel really deeply every day, which is that there are a lot of things we can control, but the one commodity we have that's limited and and uncontrollable is the amount of time we have. It's very finite. And so prioritizing what we want to do in the future is I'm, I'm always looking for opportunities to get teacher feedback on that to make sure that it's well utilized for them. But also the reality is we only have so much time for PD, for teaching, right? Like our days are limited. So making the most of that's really important. So that feedback was really great. Was that um, universal across all the schools? The request for PD? Uh, yeah, um, extra time, really. Um, I don't know like that that's always universal. I think sometimes you feel it more in one year or more in another, depending on what you're, you're doing and the implementations you're going through or the work you're engaging in. But I mean, it's I think it's certainly a universal feeling right with mm -hmm. teachers like we wish we had more time to do our own learning more time to engage with students right it's just we have this right parameter so asking them what's beneficial for future professional developments really make, helps us make the most of that mm -hmm. so that I wanted to give you a quick update on that and then the other thing I wanted to talk about is we are in the assessment window right now. This is kind of a long one. So bear with me and feel free to interrupt with questions because I don't, it's a lot of new stuff with the main through year. We're in the assessment window right now. So K through two and ninth grade do the iReady assessment this month. Um, high school tested for all of their assessments actually today third through eighth grade and 10th grade assess in the main through year for reading and math and our 11th graders took the PSATs. So that window closes October 20th for iReady, the 27th for the main through year. And 
we, I have not had an opportunity yet to show you the results of the spring main three year assessment, which was previously the MEA, but they've married it now with the MAP growth test from NWA because the assessment results weren't released until October 2nd. The results that we received are preliminary. Um, it, there was a note on there that they're not ready for public consumption because the last thing that the state has to do is just be sure that they've determined full academic year for students. So basically what that means is they have to be sure that if a kid is counted as one of Scarborough's students, they spend a certain amount of time in our district instructionally. So kids who have moved out or kids who have moved in we're here for a certain amount of instructional time to be counted as a full academic year. So they're reconfirming those numbers. And because that has the possibility to change, which would Im influence our percentages and our numbers, they've asked us to hold off on sharing data publicly, which I think makes sense, right? We want to be, we want it to, the, the results when we share them with the public to be the right, numbers and honest results. So I think that's important. I am going to share for a moment, though, because I want to show you what the results will tell us when we get them, because I've been able to begin looking at them. So I am able to give you um, just an overview. So when I'm able to share the results, what you'll see is that the state has scaled the scores into four sections. And this may feel somewhat familiar if you're if you've ever looked at the MEA results before, if you've had an opportunity to look at those in the past. So the students are based on their scoring on the assessment will be placed in one of four categories, either well below, below, at, or above state expectations for that grade level. So again, this is third through eighth grade and 10th grade. And they'll have one score for reading and one score for math. And what's different this year is the state has partnered with NWA and they're administering the main through year through NWA. So we actually don't take the math growth assessment anymore. We take the main through year. And that traditionally the MEA has only been given in the spring in a March, or May assessment window, but this year they're mandating a fall window in October and another assessment window in the spring. I think it's in, in May. And so now it's administered twice a year so that we can look at growth from the fall to the spring on the same through year assessment. I am looking forward to, so the state was slow in releasing the results from the spring. They had originally intended to have those to us in July or August, and they came out on October 2nd. But they have been really clear that now that this process has been established, they anticipate the fall results to be available 24 to 48 hours after the assessment window closes at the end of the month. I think that still like remains to be seen, um, but that's their goal. And so once I get the go from the state, which I'm expecting any day now to be able to release the results to parents, um, I have made the decision to hold off until we also have the fall results, if it's only gonna be say two more weeks. And the big reason for that is because the assessment window goes until the end of the month, I don't want parents to co be confused and think their student has already assessed if they received the spring results. I'd like to send the spring and the fall at the same time for those students that it's applicable to because I just don't want to confuse families and have them think like, so for example, Wentworth is assessing next week. If I were to send the spring results this week, it would be like, okay, I thought we were assessing next week. I guess they already assessed and we want kids to feel prepared for the assessment by getting a good night's sleep and eating a breakfast. And we don't wanna throw off, we don't wanna confuse those communications. 
So we'll send them out together at the same time. And my hope is to do that if if they're um, able to produce them in 24 to 40 hours after the uh, close of the fall window, then I'm, I'm hoping to get those out the first week of November. Um, so that, that will be nice to send it together. With that, I'll be sending a communication explaining what the two assessment results are, when the tests were taken and what they say. And that really leads us into the discussion that um, Brian had brought up about translating the results. Mm -hmm. Katie, can I interject a quick question here? Sure. Uh, hopefully, is the, is the Carolyn, it's it's really hard to hear you. Okay. You're coming. Yeah, I'll you're coming try to really type out my question. All right. That explains why I'm hearing very choppy, too. Oh, well, actually, I hear you well. No, no, no. never mind. Huh. Take it back. <laughs> yeah, you broke up again. All right. Um, let me try to make the rooms. Hold on. You, you go ahead, Katie, if you can hear me. Go ahead, and I'll, I'll chime in when I get to a different room. Do we have a chat? Yeah. I, th I thought we usually have a chat feature. I don't see it down here, though, because I was going to say maybe she could type in the chat, but I don't see it. I think that's what she was trying to do, but yeah, I don't see it currently. Yeah, I don't I either. Really now that you say that. Hmm. And I don't see an option on my end to put it back in. Yeah, that's odd. Um, well, maybe she'll be able to jump back in in a second. But yeah, I know that that had come up recently, the idea of translating all this. So that, that's why I, I liked that you had mentioned that you'll at least send something out with it. And then um, I think a, a couple of us had actually mentioned the feedback that, uh, you know, it, it just would, if you've never seen them before, even if you have seen the results before, uh, they just seem confusing to a lot of people, which I think you understood uh, Katie and uh, absolutely our trans our, our communication back and forth leading up yeah. to this meeting. Yes, um, many times I've helped families read through the results so they can understand where their child is in their learning path. And I think with this being new, it's a, an especially salient time to revisit that and you know create a short video. Um, it may even be beneficial to put a graphic like this um, in my letter. Um, so I'll have to explore that. Uh, but I think so, a short, like two or three minute video would be really helpful to send home to families that explains, you know, what do these scores mean? How can you look at them and, and ask questions about what does my child know and what can my child benefit from doing next? How might we help them at home? Um, because I know in working with families, often the question is just, you know, I want to know how to help and I want to know what to do next. And can you point me in to resources that answer these questions so that I can continue to support my child as they grow and learn? And but they, to do that, they have to understand right where where their child is, according to the educational results. And this so is look a bit when I, I, I think I missed it because I just lost my train of thought, but when are parents expected to get info on this in the spring you said so i'm hoping to um, send the spring and the fall at the same time after the fall assessment window closes okay um i am hesitant to send the spring ones out separate from the fall i think it will confuse the message about assessment windows happening right now um so i want to send them together to say here's how your child did in the fall Here's how your child did last spring. We'll take the assessment again in the spring. Here's how to read these results. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think back with my two that are in the school district now, mm -hmm. um, how often we were receiving test test information beforehand, but I, I can't for the life of me remember how often we were getting this information. I think they were getting it during like report card time. Right, and that's kind of what I'm okay. aiming for. Um, 
you know, the, uh, the middle and high school, right, operating quarters, which would be the first week of November. So, but I don't want to wait until the report card necessarily for elementary parents. I think if we send it with a letter uh, that explains what the results are and how we'll include them in the report cards moving forward, I think that that's fine. I don't know that it would make sense to send it to say our seventh and sixth, seventh and eighth graders, but not our third or fifth graders, just because they're in a trimester versus a quarter. This is new, so I I would like to. I'm I'm thinking if if it, the turnaround really is 24 to 48 hours, then the first week of November would make sense. But along yeah, because it's new, I think I think I'm inclined to agree, especially if they can if they're going to have a quick turnaround. Uh, my concern with just not getting the info right away is we have very involved parents in this town who are always looking to see how well they did on these things. Um, that's yeah, my only hesitation I, on it. I totally can appreciate that. And if we weren't assessing in the fall, for the main through year, then I would absolutely send them right out. But because we're assessing right now, I just, I think it confuses the message because we're gonna send out another set of results in two weeks that are much more current to where the child is educationally because it's a fresh assessment. Yeah, I mean, how much in reality, even if they do get their results two weeks their spring results two weeks prior to then when they received the fall results i mean right. how much remediation can happen in that time i mean there's nothing you you're really doing right back that, that's going to move the needle so right. I, I mean i get it for the sake of minimizing communication as long as we are communicating and i think as long as it's thorough when it comes out mm -hmm. so speaking to that video that came up at our workshop maybe a letter maybe both who knows um you know, it could be something that's included even in the newsletter, which I think would right. be timely. Maybe it's both. Um, you know, there, there's definitely different ways, but I know we're we're always hearing that on the board is yeah. just improved communications. And so I think this just, you know, I, I think a video and a letter, you know, something to kind of. I think both is important. I think there's the letter explaining here are the results. Here's why they're together here's when you can expect them in the future for this new assessment. And then here's the video, here's what you, here's how you actually read the results. Yeah. The students results, um, one thing I didn't mention on here, one thing that parents will be able to look forward to is the students results will be broken down with specific scaled scores in the subsets. Um, I. I can't name them all off at the, off, on the top of my head, but for example, math will have a score for numbers and operations and measurement and data and geometry. And I think the others, algebraic expressions, um, algebraic operations, something like that. Um, so they'll have a subset score for each category and then an overall score for mathematics. And in each subset, it tells you a little bit about where the child is academically in that subset. So that's beneficial as well and something that I would include in the video and how to translate the results. So I think it was, and that sounds great. I, I think um, something we should consider, which I want to say, um, I could be wrong, but I think it was Diane who had mentioned something during our workshop that when somebody had said, oh, you know, a video would be great. Um, somebody had also mentioned we should get the teacher input. Um, may have been Jenna, I forget, <laughs> but yeah. I, I, it was, it was just a good thought that, you know, to get the teacher input, because I'm just thinking from a parent's perspective now too, that as I kind of mull, mull over this a little bit more, if my daughter, for instance, ended up in the yellow below state expectations, mm -hmm. then I probably would immediately start emailing my, uh, her English teacher or something like that. You know what I mean? To say, Hey, what hat, like, what are we doing? What's the plan here? So I think any any way that we can save our teachers a little bit of stress um, from maybe trying to maybe like an FAQ um, write up that almost says like, if your child is in the orange or the yellow, you can expect your teacher to do X, Y, and Z, or you should do X, Y, and Z. 
Um, I think just so that parents kind of have a directive and an expectation to know either do I need to do something or should the school be doing something next? Right. That's a great point. And I think too, um, you know, we have parent teacher conferences coming up. And so like a lot of these conversations, I think happen within those kinds of conversations as well. So how, even if parents feel prepared to come with the right questions to the conference, because I think it's really important people keep in mind, right? Like this is one snapshot on one day of how a child did and it could and it could look really different five days later if Johnny was sick, right? Or if something had happened. And these, you know, they're accurate and they're they're helpful, but sometimes they don't tell the whole story, right? So my kid might be in the yellow on this assessment but has already hurdled over something there that was challenging them say in phonics in class and their classroom work is already showing huge gains. So it's important to have a conversation about all the different ways we look at ch a child's progress and how can that, how can this help in the conversation is a piece of it for sure. No, I, I think that's a good point. I mean, when I was teaching, and I remember when I had gone through my master's program, it was part of one of the classes that I took that always stuck with me when we had our test days, is you never know what the night before was like for a kid, right? Hi. And so was it, a were, were they not feeling well? Did they have a bad dream? Were there arguments in the house? I mean, we could go on and on. And so I, I think that, not that you need to go into that level of detail, but I, I think sometimes you know, reminding parents that again, this is just a snapshot, right. I think maybe helps to ease a little bit of stress on their part. Cause I, I'm sure if parents see that their child, and especially if it was unexpected, ends up on the lower half of the, this scoring, they're going to go, Whoa, like, where did that come from? You know, but you know, it could have just been whatever happened the day before or that day they were testing. Yeah. I would hope that our teachers are at least having conversations with the parents prior to all of these, if they're suspecting that they might be behind in some sort of way. I mean, oftentimes you're gonna find kids, they might not just be good test takers and that's okay. Um, it, it's, mm -hmm. I'm one of those people. I do not take tests well, <laughs> I fully admit to it um, and that's okay. But you know, if there is an issue, I think most of our teachers are, know our kids, their kids pretty well and they're kind of assessing them throughout the, the year, right. aside from these test days, um, and they can kind of give their parents a heads up if needed. Absolutely. And, and yeah, that's always, you can always look into the test a little more specifically. And there have been times I've spoken with a parent and said, you know, it, it's no surprise we have this big dip in a score because your child has historically taken 65 minutes to 85 minutes to take the test. And when they took this one, they took 20. So it's not really that big of a surprise that the score dipped. I don't know what happened that day or why they rushed through, but something caused them to rush through, right? Like I think about a child whose um, device had to, had to be bagged up one year that I uh, was working in a, in a different place. Um, the child got sick in the middle of the test, right? And like, we knew we knew, cancel that score, that poor kiddo, right? Like, we'll try another day. This isn't important today. So it's, there's unpredictable things, but what's important is, Jenna, you make a great point. Like teachers really should be communicating regularly about concerns or struggles and how they can work together with parents to support the child in that learning. And, and so I think a lot of this is more what are some resources and activities? What are the questions you might ask your teacher that will benefit a conversation to help support your child's learning? So I definitely am hearing like, let's reach out to teachers to get their input for like the most frequently asked questions. 
to begin with, and we can put that together as part of the letter. And then some information about what you can expect from teachers or what you might think about as a parent if your child's score is in the orange and yellow and how you might reach out to your teacher and have a conversation about that. I mean, honestly, I would even, yeah, I think there's a lot of ways that people can interpret this because I, I would even think if there's a student that's in blue and is sitting in general education classes, are there AP classes that they're not considering that we offer in the district or some, you know, something like that, where, you know, that could be a sign that maybe parents didn't realize their child was excelling in a certain area. So, you yeah. know, I, I just think the more we can do to help parents think through those things is probably better off for the child themselves. Right. So, you know, sometimes parents just don't know like, Oh, that's great to see my kid is there. But then if we put a suggestion of, Hey, if your child is in the blue and is not currently enrolled in X, Y, Z, you may want to consider it, reach out to whoever, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just another way to continue to challenge our kids, which, which, you know, historically has been something we do in Scarborough, you know, we have high achievers and parents who typically, you know, pay close attention to how their kids are doing and want to see them move through these different colors, you know, it's right. uh, that thing, you know, it's, it's the, the catch 22 we have with, with parents in Scarborough is they are very involved. And so for mm -hmm. that reason, you know, they are going to expect to see their child move through these, you know, through this rainbow, if you will, um, but yeah, if we can help them kind of, I think that's where we might be able to save some teachers some emails as well, because they might get emails like, hey, how do I help continue to challenge my kid? Well, maybe we can answer that for you, and, you know, up front. Yeah, that's a great point. I wrote that all down. Um, maybe even like a resource page for different activities your child can participate for either skill building or enrichment based on where they are. Yeah, this is great. I um, yeah, I I like the broader conversation around this just because I think aside from testing scores in general and knowing that you're new to your position, I think this this almost creates an opportunity for you to introduce yourself to the parents and also show the teachers that you really want to you know be in tune with them too. So I I think there's a kind of a win win here for a lot of people. Absolutely. very loud over here so I keep muting it um so I think that's the other than the discussion that we had which it seems like we're kind of all on the same page about did anybody have other questions or comments anything that we didn't have on the agenda or didn't bring up no but I I'm trying to text Carolyn since I know I was Carolyn just gonna say I'm worried Carolyn's question not been answered yep so Carolyn if you want to just text us your question we'll ask and you know, we'll give it a few minutes. You but, hear um, me now? Kind of, sort of. No. <laughs> I can't <laughs> find so, so I can't. Uh, but yeah, Katie, you already answered my question, so thank you. Okay. okay. Sounds like you answered her question already. That's great. I'm glad that <clears throat> I'm able to do that. I heard it. <laughs> and if other <laughs> questions come up as you, you know, are reflecting on this conversation, don't hesitate to reach out to me. And I'll certainly look forward to giving you the full picture once I'm certain we have accurate test results and they're not just preliminary. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, I do have one thing I want to bring up. My circumstances have changed. So if we want to change our meeting times to something during the day instead of the evening, um, I am open to that because I know this is kind of a very difficult hour for families, especially um, prime dinner time and all that stuff. Yeah, I can send out uh, another, I mean, especially since we kind of dropped down because um, we had Yulia on here before. Um, so, you know, since we have one less person being a, a student rep, it might, um, so yeah, I, I can send out an email and see if there's a time during the day that works for everybody. I know Carolyn has a, a busy schedule as well, so maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Um, right now we have our next meeting tentatively set for November 8th, six to seven, but, um, right. I'll shoot out an email to everybody and see if we want to change it. 
That's good. Yeah. Yeah, Thank that you. would sound great. Um, and I would, yeah, I would love to get that shored up because one thing that's on the horizon, um, I'd like to invite the high school principal, Mr. Terrio, to join us um, at one of our our curriculum committee meetings because he and I have been doing some talking. The state has a new, I, I don't remember the LD number, a new law going into effect later this month that requires schools to provide core credit opportunities for high schoolers attending CTE courses. And uh, Mr. Terrio and I had a great chuckle over that because we had begun that conversation about two months ago and both of us being new were unaware that that law had passed. And so we felt like that was super timely because it was a project we were discussing as a possibility for Scarborough students anyway. Um, and something we were both really excited about. And then to see like, we actually have to address it because it's, it's going to come into law, just felt like really serendipitous that the, the universe was like, yes, this is an excellent idea for kids. It should be done for kids. Um, so I'd love for him to join us just so we can talk a little bit about how we're looking up at that and, and what that might look like for Scarborough students. Um, so what I'm saying, um, core credits for CTE students it means looking at the courses they're taking while at Westbrook Regional Vocational Technical Center or PATHS and looking at how the standards for our subject areas align in those pathways where they could be meeting those standards right in the program at CTE and get additional, um, say, English credits or math credits as part of their curriculum in Scarborough and how we might go about doing that. I love that. That's so that's really spot on with when I was teaching. That's exactly what I was doing, where a lot of my business courses qualified for different things for other students. So a lot of times my accounting class would cover for some sort of uh, math for certain students. And then I had a but that was sometimes they call that more of an advanced math. But then I also taught a financial literacy class and they'd call that more of a basic math. And so I think you know, if it opens up more doors for some of these students, I, I think that's awesome. And um, yeah, we have had other admins on here and join us, which I think would great kind of spice up our meetings a little bit. So yeah. So once we figured that out, I, I mentioned to him sometime between November and January, I think would be pertinent. Um, we haven't hammered out any kind of details, but it's certainly something we have to turn our eye to and we're excited to to begin that project. So I'd like to talk through it with you guys. That's awesome. And then uh, eventually once you, just to jump back, once we do have the the fall and the spring results, would you plan to eventually present that to the board at a meeting? Yes, yeah, I would love to present that. But I just know other people will ask that. So that's why I asked as long as that's <laughs> dark because um, I know everybody. Thank I Thanks. think that's usually on the agenda at the end of every year, just to get a yeah, end of year update. End of the year. Um, and we can talk about whether it might make sense to do like a sneak peek of maybe just an overview, maybe not dig into like what specific, what's happening specifically at school, like grade levels, but just schools in general or the district in general. Um, Great. Yeah, no, I think that's good. As long, I just wanted to make sure it was on your radar because I know it's Absolutely. something I've regularly been doing. Is, um, so, no, that's great. Um, anything else? So for a I short, all set. it was a productive conversation. So we had lots of good great. stuff. So I wrote down some notes. I'll throw them in the minutes and then um, I'll update the board at our next uh, report out. Um, but yeah, that's great. Thanks everybody for making the time, and I'll uh, I'm gonna make a note now too to send an email out to everybody and just see if there if people want to do a different time. Great. Um, if not, then we'll stick with this. Great. 